So the fourth common mistake is having the wrong motivation. Now, a lot of, a lot of the time I've seen students who, in front of other people or whether it's for themselves, they want to sacrifice good technique for more reps or going faster or putting more weight on. And this is really bad motivation. This is a really bad way of thinking of things because uh, the bad technique stuff is essentially is going to lead to injury. Okay. And if you go further or do more or, you know, put more weight on or whatnot, but with bad technique, then it's down to you as the coach or, you know, internally to yourself to rein that back and, you know, catch it before it happens. Injuries will happen, you know, whether that is a repetitive, bad technique, bad rep, longevity type injury where you don't see any injury, you know, up front, but, you know, two months down the line, you know, because you've been doing it wrong, uh, but with a lot more weight that you shouldn't have been doing, you'll see the injury down there or through acute injury where, you know, you've put too much weight on, suddenly something like just starts aching or, you know, or worse. Yeah, you, you really don't want to have this motivation of I'm going to sacrifice technique for um, basically trying to look good or trying to overestimate what you want to you know, look like you're able to do. Stick with the training, stick with the idea that you're actually trying to get stronger, but in the right way. As the coach, it's down to you to enforce the good technique and try not to you know, allow the students to be able to you know, go faster or you know, put more weight on or add reps or whatever, because you have planned with a good plan that they just can't do that. It's just not possible with what you're asking them to do. They have to be able to do everything with good technique. Um, and again, as the coach, it's down to you to, you know, kind of nip that in the bud. You've got to be able to tell your students that no, you know, you've got to step back. You've got to go down a little bit before you go further. Uh, otherwise, you know, that's where problems are going to arise because they're sacrificing technique for essentially trying to bolster themselves or trying to look good or ego. And these are things that are not going to help you. The other problem on top of injury is that actually the student will just plateau. So what this means is that, and, and this applies to yourself as well, if you try to go too fast or if you try to put too much weight on and you're not, uh, you're, all you're trying to do is you know, put more weight on, but with bad technique, that will, that may take you a little way. That may, you know, take you for the next two or three months, but you will plateau, you will stall in your training because you have bad technique and you've decided to go fast and go ahead without trying to do the correct technique first and build slowly. So it's kind of this thing where you really want to check yourself or your students and make sure that you are not sacrificing technique for anything else. Moving into common fault number five, this is fatigue over technique. So again, I see this quite a lot where as fatigue sets into their training, the technique is sacrificed and essentially they're doing really bad reps, but they just keep going, keep going. And this type of training for um, especially strength training is just not going to be helpful at all. You want to make sure that regardless of how, what the fatigue is or how you feel, if you are unable to do good technique, you need to stop because you know trying to do them where you are very fatigued is just pointless. However, if you're trying to do an endurance based thing where fatigue is actually part of the training, that is totally fine. And also for real world training where you would be tired, you, you know, you're, you're putting in some upper body, you know, climb ups where 
you've just done a good two minutes of parkour run. Now that means that you will be fatigued and being under fatigue in that situation is a great training tool. But if you're doing it for strength training, you don't want to sacrifice that technique again if you're fatigued. Now, when we talk about fatigue, most of the time we talk about you know, our body, but also this applies to your mind. If you are unfocused and unmotivated and you're feeling you know, pretty low, then you know, this is not, there, there's a reason for that. And there's ways of training where you need to be able to identify what kind of mood you're in and how it's gonna go. If it's just not that type of day where you know, psychologically you're just not there, then more often than not, it's better to kind of rein back the training and actually do a bit of a lighter day. Because otherwise, if your mind is not on it, and you're not prepared 100% for doing your training, then this is where, again, injuries can happen. So, you know, ensure that you've done everything to kind of wake yourself up and make sure that you know, your, your mind is on. But if you're just fatigued and mentally, um, then again, this is an indicator that pot potentially you need to kind of step back a little bit. The final common fault, number six, unfortunately, is going to be one that we see a lot when it comes to CrossFit boxes and their type of competition pull-ups. These are circular pull-ups. Now, circular pull-ups are used in CrossFit mostly, and the idea behind it is within their competitions, the count that they have, so they will have a period of time where they have to do as many repetitions as possible, and the limits for that is they have to be able to get their chin over the bar and that's really the rule that as long as their chin gets over the bar that they can do that as many times as they can within the one minute now to make this faster the way that they've figured out how to do is if you do this in a circular motion where you are swinging forward coming back and then as you're starting to come forwards again, your chin just gets over the bar and then you go forwards again and you do this circular forwards and back type motion for the circular pull-up. Now you can see that the problem here is, again, it is an extension of kipping. Well, it is kipping um, and it's just not useful in the real world. For CrossFit and competition, that's absolutely fine and that is going to get you a lot more reps but in the real world for proper practical movement and functional movement, this is not going to help you in any way, shape or form. This is also not good for any type of strength training because you are not using your muscles again. We went through this with the momentum stuff that if you're using momentum and these circles to help you up, what's happening is you're using the stretch reflex of your ligaments and muscles and tissue to pull you around and then go again. And it is less strength work, which again means that the energy that is needed can be maintained and you can do more reps. And this is why that they can do more reps because they're not actually doing a pull-up. Because these circular pull-ups are using momentum, they are using the stretch reflex, like we said. This means that this, you're really going to be putting uh, your body in an absolutely unnatural position and there is a very high likelihood of strains or stretching those ligaments or muscles too much um, or potentially tearing tissue and this is really not a great way of thinking about training in my opinion and yeah trying to do strength training or most types of training with circular pull-ups is not a good idea. The other thing is the fact that with kipping and circular pull-ups, you can't do that in a lot of other scenarios. Unless you're in the competition and the situation is correct, then fine. But if you're trying to do climbing or buildering or bouldering um, or you know trying to do anything other than competition pull-ups, you, you know, that's the only, where, the only place that you can use them. And really and truly, you want to be a more functional person and unless you are doing a competition. This also has an impact on 
obviously the mechanics are different. This means that psychologically the neuromuscular pathway, so the, the brain is telling the body to do a particular thing and you're not training yourself to do the right mechanics. Your brain is not telling your muscles to do it the right way, which means again, it is not helping you. Lastly, doing large numbers and lots of repetitions of bad motor patterns and doing this type of motion is just going to injure you. It is just going to be bad for you overall, for, you know, over a long period of time and I would highly, highly recommend not doing them. So there we go, there are six common faults to keep an eye out for and a, a few things just to be thinking about if you're a coach or the student, just to check yourself and make sure that you're doing stuff correctly. Don't forget that you can film yourself or use a mirror if need be. Uh, that, this is a great tool and a great way of getting visual feedback of what you're exactly doing.